Am I being unfair to the Ravens right now? Oh, they're, I don't – yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, the 3-0 start probably, if you weren't watching the games, you might have said, whoa, you know, that's not last year's Ravens, I guess, and they're going to win a whole lot more than than five games. And, you know, they got all these guys back from injury, and, and you know, maybe they're back to being contenders. So, yeah, if you weren't watching each swing, if you just looked at the box score. But if you look at who they were playing against and how they, they really probably should have lost to Cleveland the first time around um, – you know, where they were catching teams, how they were kind of doing it. They, they weren't playing complete football by any stretch. And offensively, they were um, fairly dire, and they still are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they ran a lot of two-minute last night in the second half to beat the worst team in the league at home on a Thursday night. Um, you know, and that's the things you have to do. And, hey, they're in first place in that division. And that division is as bad as it's been really ever. My takeaway from that game, though, is that, like, Jimmy Haslam's been there, what, six, five, six, seven years now as the owner of the Browns, going through all these different people, all these players, all these quarterbacks, all these coaches, all these GMs, all these team presidents. This should have been their time. Like, he was building that thing. Right? He came from Pittsburgh, the Rooney influence. He was going to build it slow and steady like them. The ebbs and flows of the league will eventually catch up. I mean, remember, when he got there, this, league, this, this division would be sending regularly three teams to the playoffs. There's nobody in that division who looks worthy of the playoffs right now. That's true. And yeah. the Browns are the worst team, maybe, in the history of football. In a year <laughs> in which we come on and talk every week and say, who the hell is good in this league besides New England, right? You really can't. I mean, Raiders. Maybe Seattle. Raiders. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, they're 7-2, and two, but I mean, like, are, is anyone going to look at that defense and say that's a great football team? And the Browns can't win a game. They've won three games in two years. Just think about that for a minute. They are 3-2. and t- in 2014, on November 23rd, Brian Hoyer leads a comeback win in Atlanta. They beat them 26-24. They are 7-4 and in first place in the AFC North. They've won three football games since then. They are 3-28. and I would argue it might be harder to go 3-28 and in this league over a two-year span than it is to go 28-3. and Like, have they hit rock bottom yet? They benched Kessler in the middle of the game to go back to McCown who hadn't thrown a pass in – forever and wasn't even practicing like dude I, the, the, this whole idea that well they're keeping games close and there's these moral victories and it's kind of cute they're going to be a worse 0 and 16 than the lions 0 and 16 no, that's encouraging jason locking forward with us here on yes, that's where i am this morning no 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 i, I don't disagree <laughs> with that assertion I, they're they're miserable jason locking now, forward J- with us here go ahead uh teak hey jlc you took the game in live you said were you there Box yes. and, yeah. All right, so you were so you were there, and so I want to pull you off the field for a second. What were the protests like outside that game? I mean, we were monitoring them. You could kind of see them from the stands if you went in there. It was a moving um, mass of people, so it's not like they set up camp right in front of Camden Yards. You know, the area between Camden Yards and M and T Bank Stadium. They were there for a period of time. The team closed a couple of gates just to ensure that nothing happened. I think they closed them for a, a total of three or four minutes, so it wasn't an extended period of time. There were no incidents there. They, they were kind of moving through different parts of the downtown area, mostly around the Inner Harbor where the stadiums are, but, but some other areas of, of downtown as well. Um, you know, anytime you have a movement of that many people, there's, you know, concern, and you, you, there obviously some people were probably worried, would this – advance from a protest to a riot and and obviously we've got a history here in baltimore and and recently just a few years ago in the aftermath of the the uprising um following the the freddie gray uh death um and the and and fallout there we obviously had some things happen in the city that that were difficult but this was peaceful um it it obstructed some traffic etc but it was you know by and large People yeah, voicing not, their not constitutional, really a big deal. people voicing their constitutional right to protest, and yeah, it didn't stop. You know, it didn't affect the game at all. It didn't. Uh, you know, again, did somebody did it, somebody get home a little later from work than they might have otherwise? You know, pop getting out of downtown, possibly, but it. it you know, there was there was no destruction. There was no mayhem. There, there was no riot. Mm. Yeah. No. Another thing off the field, JLC. Yeah, Roger Goodell talked about this a couple of days ago, and how they combat some of the ratings issues that are going on. And things like you know, speeding up the pace of games. Uh, I, I mean, what, what, what should the NFL be concerned about regarding this ratings drop that we continually talk about? 
Well, I, I mean, I think you just have to start with the product. I mean, that game last night was on. The whole country saw that, right? If if that game was on a normal Sunday, it's it's you know buried within a bunch of other 105 starts, and it's a regional game. You know what I mean? Seen in two two cities in the country, and it's not it's not there to sort of be indicative of what the you know of of, of what a good NFL game is. I mean, they, you know, the Monday nights when it was created was a big deal, and you tried to get the best matchups, and then you added Sunday, and you add the flex rules, which protect you a little bit. But Thursday night football as a whole, the quality isn't great, even when you get two good teams just because of the fact of when you're playing it and everything else. And then you add in that every team has to be on it for competitive balance. And then we just talked about, besides New England and maybe Seattle and maybe Oakland, who are you banging the drum of a team you really, really want to see? You know, I think it comes down to a lot of that. Um, not a lot of great quarterbacks. I, I mean, I, I think the answer to this is not as simple as, well, we'll try to, like, make the officials better and we'll try to speed the game up and maybe we'll have fewer commercials. The, the answer to me is to, and I've been writing about this for years, and it seems like it's starting to catch on, invest in your own product. Create a developmental league or developmental academy where you, each team invests a significant portion of money, not a few hundred thousand dollars, several million dollars, into trying to upgrade the overall product. You can't just rely on colleges. You can't rely on a couple weeks of OTAs and truncated training camps to create the quarterbacks and, and you know, the, the great players who power your league. It, it's not really working. So until you're willing to really shift the paradigm and, and, and be willing to, to have almost something of a sunk cost, because it's not going to develop that many players, but if, if it can elevate to some degree the level of your play, I think they need to look at systemic things like that. Interesting. Uh, Jason Lock and Ford with us here, Tiki and Tierney. So, Jay, uh, quickly on this, because I wanted to get something in on Romo as well, and we don't have a ton of time, but I wanted to at least throw, throw this by you. Monday night we watch you know, the, the play uh, on the kick there at Seattle and, and Buffalo, and basically the next day that's what we discussed, and really kind of bled into Wednesday as well. How in the world is uh, the officiating crew, Walt Anderson's officiating crew, not going to face any sort of discipline? How is that possible? Well, I'm, I mean, any terms of discipline now, I, it's just sort of how it works. It, it, they're, they're, you know, it takes something for them to deem to be exceedingly egregious to suspend somebody for a week or, you know, to basically take nah, away. That was pretty bad, Jay. Right to work. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I mean, right. I, look, it's, it's their world. We're just living it. Yeah, I hear you. You know, but... Where I think it will affect them is, you know, they get ranked week to week and then post-game assignments, you know, go to who has the better grades. So I think it's a little incorrect to say, like, there's no ramifications or nothing happened because, you know, they're, they're adding up the totality of what you do week in, week out, and then it determines, you know, who gets the cherry on top in terms of the postseason. But, you know, I, I think how they rate officials and what goes into that should be a lot more transparent than it is. But... Again, I think that's like a that's like symptomatic of a problem. You know what I mean? Like, I, they're they're going to be blown calls, and, and that's but they didn't know happen. the rule book, Jay. Not, hey, ha, but I mean, look. Let's go back over the last three or four years and look at some of the things that happened. The thing is, like, did that strike you as like a crazy anomaly, or did it strike you as another bizarre thing that happens in the primetime game? Probably the latter, but without penalty, they're going to keep happening. Yeah, I mean. For, I, even even with penalty, though, it, it may still keep happening because, I mean, there's so much going on, and there's so much for these guys to keep track of. And the rule book gets so arcane. And, I mean, again, even after reviewing things 20 times sometimes, there's differences of opinion as to what actually happened. I mean, some of it, I guess, is, is part of the game. Um, you know, look, we could have the, the argument about creating officiating academies and truly investing in that and having these guys calling college games through the week and then, you know, doing college Thursday night and Friday night games and then being in tip-top short form for Sunday. Mm. Um, you could have more rigorous mental and physical testing through the week where if a guy's having a bad week in quote-unquote practice that week, maybe he doesn't get that game after all. Mm. I mean, th there's ways to, to incentivize it, but again... That's going to take these owners investing a lot of money it's in. true. No, I got you. Jason Lock and Ford, Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Tiki, what you got, bud? Yeah, you know, uh, JLC, we only have about 45 seconds here. Where is Tony Romo, and, and is he going to play this year at all, or should, or should he play at all this year? I think 
he will play um, because I don't think Dak Prescott is going to run the table and and uh, you know just just have the greatest rookie season in the history of NFL quarterbacking. If he does, then it'll be a moot point. If he doesn't, then Jerry Jones at some point is probably going to want to look, look at his $20 million quarterback and see what he could do with the same resources, especially if, if this is a team that they feel like could win multiple games in January. And who's going to give them the best opportunity to do that then when teams are throwing things at you they've been holding back all year, when they've, when they've really broken you down on tape and have figured out what you can and can't do, and they're, they're most poised to exploit it when you're playing quality opponents every seven days. That's where the rubber hits the road. And, and personally, I think Tony Romo is going to have an opportunity to play for this team this year. 